All right, everyone, extremely rich, politically connected Michelle Obama wants you to cry for her because she's the victim of racial discrimination in this country. Wow. Uh, so multi, multi-millionaires who married a former president and who have like uh, secret service agents around them at all times and live in a mansion uh, in the D.C. area and who can vacation anytime they want and who get like the presidential pension box and everything else. You're being uh, discriminated against. Oh, really? Would you like to give some concrete examples of this? No, I don't mean people criticized you. Because people criticize politician hacks like yourself all the time without racial animus. Uh, I can criticize, for instance, John McCain, who's, uh, he's my fellow white man. Uh, you would think I would thus want to defend him for some odd reason if I had racial intent in mind. But he's a moron, that's why I attack him. He's got bad ideas. He probably shouldn't be in office because he's probably at some point gonna have a, uh, some massive neurological issues because he's got fucking cancer in his head. He probably should resign, but he's too stubborn to do that. He'll, he'll be on the Senate floor one day and he'll just feel faint and keel over and he'll say, well, I did my job. I, I dragged myself out as long as I could. With people like the Obamas, very few people judge them based on the color of their skin. They base, them, they base their judgment on the content of their character. I think Martin Luther King would approve, you know, Martin Luther King, who is hilariously, uh, largely a Republican individual. Yeah, must, must the party switched. Okay, I'm not going to get into that fucking debate. It's worthless. You're trying to boil down dozens of substantial issues into one uh, homogenized core. It just doesn't work that way. But here's the point. Michelle Obama deserves to be criticized in her capacity as a non-elected official, by the way. And, and we've got to be honest when saying that. Largely, a first lady does not uh, determine policy. School lunch policy was her big issue. That is, we're going to have Obama lunches now. You know, we're going to give you uh, smaller portions and more wilted greens and more cases of food poisoning, which is totally retarded. It makes absolutely no sense. It cost a lot to implement this program. It didn't actually raise the food standards at all. We're still giving kids swill that wouldn't even be deemed fit for prisoners. We have for a long time. That's a, It's a little bit of an issue within schools anyway. You want to make them pay more to give kids even crappier food. And that's her signature piece of, of work as first lady in that ideological non-elected capacity. Moreover, you're married to someone who deeply hazarded the United States, proclaimed that there was a massive recovery going on that didn't trickle down to, uh, you know, small town America and certain parts of the United States at large. It basically affected the urban coastal regions and everyone else got left behind. But Obama loves the, loves the urban setting, so he doesn't care about those little Bible-thumping, gun-toting rubes out there in the hinterlands. He just doesn't care about them. That's why the Democrats lost the last election. And this is a Hillary Clinton strategy, by the way, that Michelle Obama's using. Probably going to run for the Senate or something in the future. Uh, basically, pity me. I'm an, I'm an outcast because of the color of my skin. Much like Clinton drummed up support, said, oh, I'm a former first lady with name recognition. I'll wait a while and then I'll run for the Senate and I'll say, hey, I'm female, vote for me. And it worked on the state level because you're in a deep blue area. Oh, Michelle Obama could certainly do that in the D.C. region. Um, and then fails to become the president because the nation at large rejects the argument of, oh, I have to vote for her, otherwise I'm a sexist. Including among college-educated white women. Yeah, not, not exactly the most white male cis fuck demographic that you could think of. Now, that's really what they do. They try to break people apart constantly. Then they wonder why people are mad at them. That's really what they do. And what would you say, by the way, uh, since you want to boil down all criticism of your ideas to racism, which you're not giving any concrete examples, so I'm assuming you mean your critics in general. In, in essence, everybody's racist if they don't uh, deeply, deeply adore you like you're the living fucking messiah. What would you say about like the doctor of common sense or maybe Ben Carson or somebody like that? You know, someone who's black and thinks you're scum. What would you say about them? Now, you don't have much to say, do you? Now, the Democratic like super fans, the super partisans, they actually do have something to say. They call, they use racial terms to describe them too. If you confronted them with a couple of doctor of common sense videos, what would they say? Oh, he's, he's a brainwashed 
uh, an Oreo or something like that. They would use racial terms to describe him. Now, isn't that funny? I thought that uh, the bigots were the ones that were attacking the Obamas. They could only possibly have race in mind, not ideology. And again, what about those of us who will uh, cast our criticism at any random white Republican individual too? Because sometimes they're fucking morons. John McCain's a moron. <clears throat> Lindsey Graham's a moron. Rick Scott's a moron. A lot of these people are my Pat Robertson's a moron. And they're all white. They're also all male and, and like lean to the right, but they're still morons. Uh, you're pla you are a moron. Uh, Michelle Obama is a, a crazy woman who thinks that it's a good idea to tinker with an already crappy school lunch program. And then she wants kudos for it, like it's a major piece of work. It's a major policy shift. It really, really benefits the U.S. No, it doesn't. It's why the policy got ripped apart recently. One of the first things Trump ripped apart and good on him for doing so. We made school lunches uh, tolerable again. We made them edible at least again. Not tasty, not good, but they're, they're edible. You have 10% less salmonella cases. Now we do need an overhaul of the school lunch program in the direction opposite what Michelle Obama wanted to do. Really though, criticism of her goes in hand in, uh, hand, in hand with the fact that her husband is Barack Obama. And here's the secret, <clears throat> she's not like Melania. Melania sits in the background, says very little, uh, other than occasionally coming to defense of Trump, and especially her son, because people keep trying to drag him. It's like he's a little kid, and people are trying to talk about the way he acts as though it's indicative of, of Trump's policies or, or his mental status. He's an awkward, what is it, 11, 12-year-old kid. Of course he's going to occasionally act awkward. What, you didn't at that age? And people want to drag that, as though it has any substantial meaning. Now, that's real hard-hitting journalism right there. And journalists in this country that love the Obamas. Oh, they fucking love them. They never ask them hard-hitting questions. All they do day after day now is ream Trump over and over. Evil frog posters, evil right-wingers, evil Nazis everywhere, Ma Hitler, Trump is orange orangutan buffoon. That's all they talk about now. It's all they fuck every single day. Every headline is Trump related and it's always something negative. When's the last time they talked about anything else? It's so boring. With Obama, it was just a love fest. But here's the thing. Michelle Obama put herself out there to be criticized by delving into policy and delivering public statements and talking politics on the Ellen DeGeneres show and stuff like that. That's why she opened herself to criticism. She became a public figure. Melania, meanwhile, doesn't really care about that. She just stays in the background. It'd be more like, uh, uh, it'd be more like Laura Bush style. Comes out, reads to some kids, uh, goes to a couple of DC parties, and really doesn't meddle in the policy much. Is only occasionally seen really in public at all. That's more the way they, the Trumps do it too. With the Obamas, it was different. It was more of a, a power couple pairing. It was more like the Clintons or something. Of course, Hillary was very, very visible during the Clinton administration. And she sowed the seeds of her own demise by being so. She managed to defend her husband. And there were some who admired her for doing that. But she opened herself up to criticism by giving people hours and hours and hours of public statements she had made to reanalyze when she ran for the presidency. And there are some people who do this, and there are some first ladies who don't do this. And Michelle Obama happens to be one of the first ladies who did. Oh, all of my husband's critics are racist is basically what it boils down to, at least in her mind, apparently. Well, you're totally, completely wrong. A lot of his critics are people who aren't even white. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that the Democratic Party never stood for any progressive causes and really didn't now you took a back seat on every so-called bit of progress that this country ever made you took a back seat on everything meanwhile you're too barack obama was too busy talking about how we needed more gun control as though it was a popular issue to harangue about that was basic for several years that's all he did he didn't get anything else accomplished here shitty health care and uh, some scandals involving mass surveillance and I pissed off Russia and started a new Cold War. Sorry folks, bye. Please vote for Hillary Clinton as my uh, as uh, the one to continue carrying this tattered banner for me. And they wonder why she loses and Obama comes out and says, oh, Trump won't be president, don't worry. <laughs> How wrong you were. So much for your omnipotence, Mr. Messiah. That's about all. Peace out.